to The Popish Plot. I'm Mike. And I'm Jessica. It's Memento Mori Monday, and we are once again talking about the Remember Your Death Lenten Devotional. Yes. <laughs> so, we are now on the Monday of the fifth week of Lent. Yes, it's almost over, right? Well, yes, but it's a cyclical thing, so even when it's done, it'll come back around next year. Yeah, yeah, but you, you, you kind of get it because you're in choir, mm -hmm. but you're not in media. Mm. We have one whole day where I think we're showing up at 8 in the morning, oh. and, well, according to the official church rubrics, we should be allowed to go home sometime before dawn. But we all know that in our parish, the rubrics, eh. We, usually we get home 2, 3 in the morning. <laughs> the sun has very rarely come up by the time you get home. Exactly. That's fair. So, today, this... The gospel reading is from John, and it seems awfully familiar. Like we've just encountered it on Sunday. Mm. Unless you're doing the scrutinies. Anyway, it's one of the best accounts there is. It's the woman caught in adultery. Which is a reminder, of course, that death lurks around any corner. You never know when a group of sinners are going to call you out and stone you for a sin that they probably set you up for. And conveniently, you know, didn't catch half the parties involved. Yeah, where's the dude? She was caught in the very act of adultery. Where's the dude? Pharisees. Jerks. Yep. And we also have a lovely quote by St. Augustine, who, being a early, you know, church father type person, probably has really deep and profound things to say. I've, I've often <laughs> resisted reading the church fathers because I thought I'd be very intimidated by the language that they use. So here's an example of Augustine's extremely complicated prose. Yes. Were you bad yesterday? Today be good. Have you continued in your wickedness today? At any rate, change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. are, are, are you sure you're reading St. Augustine, the great learned philosophy guy? Um, this, this, this reads like, I don't know, maybe a page a day calendar? <laughs> ah, but communication is a two-way street. If you express yourself in beautifully florid language, what we used to call purple prose, and none of your audience can understand it, then you haven't communicated anything. Mm, true. Yeah. So, sure, these are short declarative sentences, but they're effective. Yes. You are always waiting, and you prom your, promise yourself a lot, of mercy, a lot from the mercy of God. Period. Because it's true it for is. every one of us. Yes, and, and this seems like very, you know, easy-to-use advice. Mm-hmm. This is, this is the, the beauty of memento mori, of remembering your death. Mm -hmm. We are, all, at least speaking for myself, okay. I'm extremely lazy. If there's anything that I can reasonably put off till tomorrow, I'll never do it today. But the Lord, in his mercy, reminds us that none of us know when we'll be called to account. There's, of course, the famous parable of the, the fat cat who's got some you know, barns and he's going to tear them down and build bigger ones. It seems silly. He'd simply get more land and build new barns on the new land. So you have your old barns and even more barns. Yeah, but you know, this is the way rich people are. They always want to replace the old with the new, even if the old is still perfectly functional. I'm just saying, he's not a good farmer. If you go to a r real farm, they've got like 27 barns because they keep just making a new one. They're like, this was falling apart. Should we get rid of it? No. Nope. Yeah, it's too much work. We'll nope. just build one over here. It's fine. <laughs> more barns. Yeah. <laughs> But, of course, that man, you know, his life is demanded of him that very night. Same with us. Like, okay, I like my sin today. I like being, I, I'm kind of like these Pharisees. I like being really self-righteous and judgy. And I'm totally comfortable with that today. And I think, okay, yes, I should repent. Mm, I've already kind of made a mess of today. I'll repent tomorrow. Eventually, you'll run out of tomorrows. Remember your death, because there's no guarantee that you'll have tomorrow. So, repent today. Yes, yes. This whole thing goes into basically, you can't plan on having a deathbed conversion because, you know, you always imagine that at your deathbed you're going to be like 90 or 100 and you'll have the family around you and you'll be dying for some random disease that isn't particularly painful or excruciating. It doesn't require a lot of medicine, but you'll get, you know, a little bit of stuff that makes you, you know, have mm -hmm. some fun. But and it follows mm -hmm. a very straight, simple, non-surprising progression. Exactly. So you'll know exactly when you're going to expire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you wait until the last possible moment and, hey, howdy, you're in heaven. Yeah. What? You never know when you're getting hit by a bus. No, because bus drivers are often horrible drivers. Some bus drivers are very good drivers. 
But I've been behind a lot of city buses where I'm like, I know for truck drivers, if you get in one accident, you're fired. How do you have your job? <laughs> oh, Flint. <laughs> Maybe they could blame it on a pothole. You know, like, I was stopping, but I was airborne due to the pothole that launched me in the air 20 feet. For all we know, they are driving perfectly straight. The roads are just so <laughs> unequal that it appears they're darting hither and there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Accordingly, for the sake of those who endanger themselves by despair, God has offered us a refuge of pardon. And for those who endanger themselves by hope and are deluded by delays, he has made the day of death uncertain. These are really not that complicated. No. It's good fundamental. See, this is why it was good to be a doctor of the church early on. He doesn't need to come up with anything incredibly innovative. He just has to basically state the truth in a straightforward way. Yes. And boom, he becomes Augustine. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, stay away from pears. <laughs> stay away from pears and don't just have a common law wife for 20 some years. But he was more upset about the parish. He was more <laughs> upset about the parish. Well, he got a he got a he, he got his son out of the the mistress. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> so. Remember your death. Remember that every one of us is a sinner, and so while it is a mercy to rebuke our brothers and sisters, we must do so in charity, conscious of the fact that, well, again, if the Lord challenges us to be the first to cast a stone. You know, outside of Mama Mary, the rest, none of us are going to be tossing rocks. And she's yeah. too nice. Yeah. Although I do love that joke. It is a funny joke. I can't believe Father didn't hear it until I told him that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should probably close this up until tomorrow. <laughs> Fair enough. So, continue to remember your death. Comment below with... What the story of the woman caught in adultery stirs up in you. Or the time when you should have repented and instead you've delayed presuming that you had tomorrow. And comment today because you don't know if you'll be able to comment tomorrow. Mm. But we hope so. Yeah. Because we have new episodes coming out. Yeah. Subscribe to our channel. Ring the church bell so that you'll be notified when tomorrow's plot comes out. And because Lent is relentless, there will be a new one tomorrow. And yeah. so until then, and remember, it's tricky when it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love. Death. 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 <laughs> I wish we had skulls. You could go and make it look like they were talking. That would be much more fun. I hope it wasn't too loud. <laughs>